back to Cutting It Close, a channel where we talk woodworking technology, a little bit of business, and make some cool projects. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get material like this for free for your next wood project. Now, before I go on, um, it's about 110 degrees in my shop. I'm in Texas. I'm in southern Texas. So if I start sweating a little bit during this video, don't mind it. It's just extremely hot. It's like a sauna in this shop. Okay? Now, we're going to have three things I'm going to go over in this video is... Um, where this, this material is produced, why it gets produced, and how to go about getting it for free from the, pre the people who make it, okay? So where does this stuff get produced at? This is actually scrap from different cabinet shops and millwork shops um, locally and around my area, within a 50-mile radius of my area, okay? Now, there is two different fish in the woodworking industry. You got the big fish and you got the small fish. You and I are considered very small fish unless you're watching this video and you own a very large cabinet shop, okay? Then you have the big fish, okay? Those guys have a lot of employees, a lot more machines, and a lot of overhead, okay? And so to them, this is considered scrap. But to you and me, this is considered a very good material for a project, okay? This can be a potential cutting board, a plaque, a um, something that goes on a desk, a wall hanger, a 3D carving right here, right? You can cut this stuff up and you could probably make tables and chopping block carts and countertops with it and all kinds of stuff. But to the big fish in the industry, um, this is considered scrap because they it costs too much uh, for them to be able to go through it, okay? So that leads me to the second thing. Why is it here, okay? Well... You have boards, so there's, and let me actually give you the actual reason why it's there. Because I have a small shop, and this stuff starts accumulating in my shop as well. And I'm going to kind of go through why it's actually there and, and how it accumulates in these larger shops. Okay? So whenever you get, whenever you get a giant bundle of wood in, 30% of those boards are usually a foot shorter. If for some reason, they do that. It's industry standard. So if I order a bundle, which is a lot, it's usually a thousand board foot of wood, 30% of those boards, let's say I order 10-foot boards, 30% of them are going to be 9-footers. I don't know why. That's just the way the industry goes, okay? Now, a lot of those, some companies can't use that extra foot on those 10-footers. So they cut everything down to 9-foot. And remember, they have a lot of machinery, a lot of employees, a lot of overhead. So the wood waste is actually, it's actually cheaper for them to cut everything down to 9-footers um, and then just throw away these pieces or uh, put them in a grinder and or put them in a dumpster, okay? So pallets like this get made from these shops cutting off a one-foot section off of their piece, um, off of their lumber, okay? Typically, it's one inch thick. This stuff is two inches thick, but that's how this gets made, okay? Now, these longer strips, let's say there's this 10 or this nine-foot board, right, or 12-foot board, and there's a bad spot on it mid-board. Well, they can't take the time to go and cut each side of that board and then trim it down. So they actually take a, maybe a piece this big and they run it on a rip saw um, and they actually cut slivers off the side to actually straight edge their boards, okay? So they're going to S, 2S their boards. They're going to straight side, eat, straight line rip each side of their board, okay? So that's where all these pieces come from. It's just different rips from um, the lumber that they're cutting. Now, typically, it's in 8 and 10 foot sections. I've actually cut it down um, to be able to move it around on a pallet because I'm making smaller products with it, okay? But that's how this stuff starts accumulating. Well, remember, they have, a, once again, they have a lot of overhead, so you're actually going to help them by taking this off their hands because this literally goes into a dumpster or goes into a big grinder, okay? So how do you go about getting scraps, a.k.a. good material for you and me, um, from these large shops. Honestly, in my experience, you just go up to them and ask them, hey, what do you do with your scrap? What, and remember, scrap. What do you do with your scrap, right? And they say, oh, we just burn it, or we put it in a wood chipper, um, or we grind it up, or we just throw it in the dumpster. And when I was young and starting out, I actually went through their dumpsters and actually grabbed pieces like this, and I'd cut them up and make cutting boards out of it um, and sell it to people. So just by going up to them and ask them, hey, what do you do with your drops? Or what do you do with your offs? And they'll say, hey, well, this is a giant bundle of offs that we have. And, by, and, you, and you ask them, hey, can I take that off your hands for you? Or how often do you get this? Or you know, what do you do with it? 
And sometimes they donate it to schools and whatnot, but a lot of times they'll actually give you this stuff for free or they'll say, hey, for 10 bucks, take it all, I don't care. Load up the bed of your truck, load up your trailer, just take it off my hands. Because you're actually doing them a favor, you see, because they either have to pay for disposal of it, they have to pay a, a trash truck to come and take it, they have to run it through their machines, which cost them money, or their employees have to handle it, which also costs them money. So you say, hey, I'll come take it off your hands. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No problem, right? And you come and you take it from them. They're happy. You're happy because you just got a whole bunch of stuff for free so you can start making more money off your projects. Your material cost drops just to gas to get there. And you can start being more profitable and buy more cool tools, more stuff, and uh, get on with your woodworking life. So this is a tip that I hope really helped. Um, I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started. Don't forget to give this channel a subscribe, give this video a like, and leave the comments in the comment sections below. And remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.